Hey everyone, I'm Uriah Kaiser, publisher here at Potomac Local News. Thanks for stopping in and spending some time with us here on this channel. We like to talk to you and and, and hear from you as well, a, an interactive conversation about uh, the local news and how we cover local news, why we cover local news, and 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 you of course your get your feedback and your input because you're a big help. You are integral to our process, our reporting process of covering local news. So please go ahead and like this video subscribe to this channel and tell us that you want to see more videos like this we're happy to do them and we're so happy that you're here right now i want to talk about a couple things uh that are going on uh, uh just real quick i just came from colonial forge high school in stafford county and uh said a goodbye to a, a great intern that we had since january one of our spring interns becca uh, is uh, headed on to graduation now, and we wish her all the best. She was such a uh, a great part of our team and uh, always contributed to the conversation here and always uh, did great work, especially on the Pets Post. If you have been listen, watching our website at PotomacLocalNews.com, you've seen those pet posts that she puts up, uh, and uh, it's a great way to let uh, our readers know that there are many, many animals in your local shelter to go to adopt. So, Becca, thanks so much. We'll write. Uh, we'll we'll see you soon. Uh, keep us in the loop of what you're up to, and and good luck at Christopher Newport University. I'll be writing something about Becca and sharing a photo that we took in our newsletter. So make sure uh, keep a lookout for that. The other thing that I, I wanted to talk about today, and, and the main reason for this video, is I said here at the top, we like to talk about how we cover local news and why we cover local news and the, the process. And if you have all day, I'll spend all day talking about it. I know you don't, and that's why I'm going to keep this video as short as possible. Uh, so th th for if you haven't... Uh, if you didn't, if you missed the story we ran on the 23rd of March, I'm sorry, the 24th of March, 2023, uh, Stafford County, there is a, a historic tax increase proposed for residents of Stafford County. The real estate property tax could go up by 40% over last year. We've got the details. I'll post a link to that story in the description of this video. Uh, and of course, you're seeing it right here on your screen. If you, if you need to catch up on that story, please do. It's uh, we, we reported the meeting in which the Stafford Board of County Supervisors advertised that tax rate again, 40 percent higher uh, than uh, what was uh, proposed last year. That rate uh, cannot be raised now that it's been advertised. Virginia state law says the board can advertise a tax rate to let the people know uh, that this is the tax rate that they're considering, uh, which will be used uh, to fund local government on as it is normally on the backs of homeowners, uh, people who own real estate in the county, uh, and uh, not only local government, but schools. And so um, you can see that story and, and why they're talking about raising taxes largely to fund uh, more schools, more, more improvements in schools, uh, largely go to education. So that story again on PotomacLocalNews.com. Uh, but over the weekend, we got, um, we started getting um, sort of messages on Twitter uh, uh, from a uh, sitting supervisor, uh, Monica Gary. She's a Stafford County supervisor elected to serve in the Aquia District. She was elected in 2021 to serve a four-year term on the Board of Supervisors, and now she's running for a Virginia State Senate seat uh, that includes uh, portions of Stafford County and Spotsylvania County. And so she's um, so she's a public figure. She's out there, and and she starts hitting us on on Twitter, taking shots at us, and and. And saying that our news is not, our story is, is not uh, accurate and is not, our reporting is not trustworthy. And so um, I tweeted back and I said, you know, you, you have my cell phone number. You, we've talked many times on my cell phone and, and she's she's been good to, to, to call us to let us know of local news uh, that, that uh, is happening in, in, the, in the county, in the area. And we're happy to share that local news. Uh, and I simply said to her that if something is is incorrect, um, we want to get it right. I mean, we aim to get it right every day, uh, and and some days we do, and unfortunately, some days we don't live up to that goal. Uh, but when we do have correct information, we make that correction immediately, as soon as we have it, because we 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 want to uh, to uh, quash any incorrect uh, information that may live on our website. And so it turns out. Uh, that after reading, uh, continuing to read those those tweets, there, um, 
it the, she would not say the story was incorrect. Uh, she just continued to say that uh, she did not like the way that we reported the story. She accused us of twisting facts and but won't say which facts were twisted. Well, in my mind and maybe yours too, if something is fact, it's a fact. Uh, facts are stubborn things. And as as one great uh, president, uh, John Adams said, and they're either fact or not. And if there is a correction that needs to be made, uh, then, as I stated earlier, we certainly will, will correct it. So it will be factual. Uh, but that that did not come over the weekend with her messages. And to this day here on uh, Tuesday, March 28th, still waiting on any sort of correction that she's saying that our story is incorrect. And we've not heard from anybody else. So we have to assume that our story about a proposed 40 percent tax increase on homeowners and property owners in Stafford County is is accurate. Uh, Miss Gary goes on to say that we should have interviewed, quote, any number of parents who are begging for the tax increase. Uh, that would be a good start for balanced reporting. And I'm not going to disagree. Uh, you know, if uh, if we were to go out into the field and talk to 20 different parents who uh, live in the community, we we might find that you know, 10 or four and maybe 10 are against, or maybe a majority is for, maybe the minority is, is maybe the majority is, is for uh, keeping taxes low. Um, and, that, and that's fair. We have a very small staff. Uh, and in fact, we are the only local independent news reporter covering the Stafford Board of Supervisors at this time, the Fredericksburg Freelance Star, the, the daily newspaper, does not have a reporter in the Board of Supervisors at this moment. And yet, to be honest with you, I hope they get one back soon because we need as many independent reporters, uh, eyeballs, watchers, observers, documenters as possible. You know, 30 years ago, the local news business was a competitive news business. You had newspaper, uh, you had multiple newspapers in multiple towns. You had morning newspapers, evening newspapers. On top of that, you had radio stations, you had TV stations, and, and it was a very competitive marketplace. In the past 15 years, however, we've lost more than 1,500 local community daily newspapers. And if, you, if you're watching in Prince William County, Virginia, you'll know. Uh, that the newspaper that I carried as a kid, as a paper boy, the Potomac News, uh, and worked at it, the Manassas Journal Messenger and sold advertising for later in life, uh, closed, uh, merged, became the News and Messenger uh, in 2009, and closed in 2012. And that the, those, those two newspapers, the Potomac News and the Manassas Journal Messenger, had a 157-year combined service. To the, to the Prince William County, Manassas area. And so now we're seeing the effects in, in, in Fredericksburg where the Freelance Star has, has shrunk in size. And of course, uh, not only the, the, the thickness of the newspaper, but also the, the number, as I said, reporters who are on the ground as Stafford County is without. Uh, so getting back to my point about the meetings. So our story uh, covered the meeting that the supervisors decided to advertise the tax rate that is 40% higher than last year. And we not only quoted the uh, people who wanted, who were in support of the higher taxes, uh, those those were the Democrats on the board and the independents on the board, of which Monica Gary is one of those independents. And we also quoted the Republicans who were not uh, against, uh, I'm sorry, who were not for the 40% proposed tax increase in Stafford County. Uh, and we quoted two each, two for, two against. And I got to tell you, if we were biased or twisting facts, as Miss Gary likes to say, we probably would have only quoted one side and called it a day. But we did our best to, to pull out two quotes and from both sides of the elected officials on the dais who, who always tell us that they are representing the best interests of their community because they're the ones that go out and talk to people. Ms. Gary often says, I go out, I talk to people, this is what I'm hearing. And so if that's what you're doing, if you're speaking for the people you're talking to, we're certainly gonna quote you and put you in our story. And we're gonna look for both perspectives 
that is represented during the meeting. Um, now, yeah, back to what Ms. Gary said, would it be great if we could go out and talk with 20, 30, 40 people, look up speaker, uh, look up the names of addresses of people who signed up to speak at public meetings, follow them up, um, go read all the email that comes in to the supervisor's uh, boxes who are either for the tax increase or against the tax increase. Sure, that would be fantastic. But in a, uh, and that's in a perfect world, we would do that. Uh, but given the, the constraints and time uh, that we have here at Potomac Local News and the, the sheer amount of local news uh, that is happening, uh, unfortunately, our, we just cannot, we cannot do it like that. And so what we will do is we will go to meetings and we will cover the process of the meeting. That's where the sausage of local government is made. We will tell you about the meeting and what's coming up. Matter of fact, April 4th, it's a Tuesday, 7 p.m. It's a public hearing. You can go to the Stafford County Government Center at 1300 Courthouse Road in Stafford, Virginia, and speak your mind about this proposed tax increase and let them know what you think. And we'll be there too, to listen to the residents as they speak before their elected board of supervisors uh, that evening, April fourth, Tuesday, April fourth at seven p.m. Uh, and 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 yes, you know, unfortunately, not everybody can go. Everybody has lives; they have jobs, uh, kids, late nights, sports practices, civic events. You know, there are there are a, a thousand and one different reasons why someone might not be able to go to a public meeting. And frankly, that's why we go because Potomac Local can be there to report on the meeting, document what happens, report back to you what not only what happened, but who voted for what, what they said about it, where their mindset was, and what happens next. You know, if, if in fact, taxes are increased 40% uh, when they pass the budget in late April, I believe it's April 18th. Um, homeowners will face a much higher real estate uh, bill, uh, tax bill that they'll receive uh, later uh, in late spring, early summer, um, that will be again, 40% uh, higher than what they um, received uh, last year. The With this proposed tax increase, the average bill could, could shoot up to just over $5,000. And that's up from about 3,400 a year ago. That's for the uh, average single family home in Stafford County. Uh, and so boiling it down, we will tell you where the meetings are. We will tell you how to participate in the meetings. And if you can't make it, we'll report on what happens because that's what you trust us to do. Um, and if something is incorrect, please, uh, you, you can reach us online. Uh, you can email me, news at potomaclocal.com. You can hit us on Facebook, Potomac, uh, Facebook at Potomac Local, uh, Twitter at Potomac Local. Uh, there are so many, we send out an email every day. Just respond. If you get a sign up for our email newsletter, it's free. When you get that in, the e in, you, in your inbox and you see something that uh, you, you don't think is correct or have a question about, reply to that email. Just send it right back to me. I'm sure to answer. We want to hear from you. We love hearing from you. You are the reason that we are here. And if you want to, my, the other advice is, and this is someone who's been covering public meetings for more, uh, for nearly 15 years, those who show up evoke um, reaction and really are the ones that spark change. You know, if, if, if you, the emails are great and, you know, sending uh, thoughts and 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 text messages and Facebook messages and and uh, you know that's fantastic and we again know everyone can't go to public meetings but but those who show up and those who speak about a topic either for or against they stand and they hold up a sign uh, they uh, wear a certain color T-shirt uh, to signify that they're with a group that uh, uh, either is for or against an issue uh, that generally is what wins the day at, at these meetings. And so uh, just as the supervisors do, and as, as just as Miss Gary has done many times, uh, we here at Potomac Local News encourage you to go participate in your process, the local government process, and 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 speak about what's the decisions that are being made. And ultimately, um, you know, feel free to, to uh, after you write your speech uh, and you go down and deliver it at the podium during the meeting, send me a copy of the speech. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to see it. We may even run it as a letter to the editor. Uh, at the end of the day, Miss Gary, still waiting on the uh, correction. If there is one, I'd love to hear. It. If not, um, you know, I'm sorry, but 
I, I don't know how what twisting of fact and reporting. I mean, anyone can really go back and listen uh, to the uh, to watch the video. There's an audio transcription of the meeting. I mean, you can go back and pull word for word what we reported and what was done. And uh, we'll continue to do that. We'll continue to report on meetings. We'll continue to tell you what your local elected officials are doing. Uh, because that's what you have told us you wanted. And that's why uh, 1.5 million people come to our website, PotomacLocalNews.com, every year to find out what's happening, where they live here in Northern Virginia. And we thank you so much. And we certainly will keep the local news coming. If you are, are if you like what you heard, again, please like this video, subscribe to this channel. If you want to support our journalism, please go to PotomacLocalNews.com right now and sign up for our free email newsletter. And once you get that email newsletter, if you're liking what you're seeing and you want more, if you want 100% access to all of our great local journalism, please consider becoming a member. It's really easy to do. Go to our website, PotomacLocalNews.com and click on Members. There at the top, it's in the hamburger menu if you're on mobile, right in the top left uh, corner of the page. And uh, please uh, consider a annual subscription uh, or a quarterly subscription, whatever fits your budget best. But that ensures that, that those subscriptions ensure that the stories that you have come to trust us, uh, come to rely on us for, to know about what's happening where you are, those stories keep coming. That's it for now, folks. I'm Uriah Kaiser, publisher of Potomac Local. Hope you come back and join us again. Have a great day.